morning, everyone. Good morning. So wonderful to see you. It's so good to uh, gather together on this Sunday morning that God has blessed us with. And I just want to say it's good to see Big Jim back with us. Can you give him a round of applause? At least I think that's who it is anyway. Not an hour. Okay, thank you. I want to share some updates with you before we start a time of worship today. Next, this coming Friday, if everything goes well and the weather works, they're going to be starting on the porch and the reconstruction and the revamping of the porch. So we will all be coming in the handicap and the ramp side then. So keep that in mind as we gather together for next week. And also on Sunday, August 9th, as we continue to celebrate our 150th, and indeed it has been different as we've been going through this preparation and celebration of it. But Pastor Gay Irwin will be with us and bring the message with us this morning, that morning, so I wanted to share that with you. And also on Sunday, August 16th at 2 o'clock, there's going to be a prayer walk at Carroll Elementary School. So I wanted to share that with you and keep that in mind. And also on August 30th, we've got a lot going on, but on August 30th, there's going to be a blood drive here at the church from 8 o'clock to 1 o'clock. But you need to call to make an appointment to have your blood, give your blood. Is that correct, Judy? That's correct. So I just want to share that with you. The number is on the posters that, were, that are around, but we will also be getting that information out. So I wanted to share all that with you. And believe me, we do need blood today. It is a dire need in our nation. So I wanted to share all that with you. But as we gather for this time of worship, I wanted to share these verses with you. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. Let us pray. Come, Lord Jesus. We come together in your name for this time of worship. We need to hear your voice and learn of you. Speak to us of gentleness and strength. In your compassion, draw us into your merciful embrace. Quiet the distracting thoughts clamoring for our attention in our minds. Center our spirits in your peace. Open our hearts to your wise teaching that we may grow wise and strong in the ways of your kingdom. And we ask it all in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. Amen. I invite you, if you are able, to stand together and sing our first song, which is Here I Am, Lord. <laughs> Thank you. 
Before you see to turn to one another and wave at one another and greet one another in that way. I want to give thanks for something as we start our prayer time today and uh, something I never thought I'd give thanks for, but was it's for my phone, my iPhone. Now, why would I do that? <laughs> I received a text message and a Facebook message this morning from some of the younger members of our church, and it just blessed my heart to know that they know that we're still family. We're still together. And it just lifted my heart, and I just wanted to share that with you. It's a strange thing for me to give thanks for an iPhone. I was thankful this morning. It just blessed me. So I wanted to share that with you as we go into our prayer time. Because we are so blessed to have this wonderful gift of prayer that God has given to us. Not only connects our heart with God, but keeps our hearts connected together. Even those that are going to be watching later on Facebook or YouTube, they're still part of our family. And we still have that connection because we are connected to our God. God connects us all together by his grace and love through Jesus Christ our Lord. So I want to give thanks and praise to God today. But I want to share these few concerns that I've received and just share them with you. Continue praying for the family of Tyler who was a tow truck operator who was hit, hit and killed on the job. Keep that family in your prayers if you would. I also want to ask you to be praying for that, the, fa the family of the Amish girl, Linda. You know, who they're still looking for. That's been heavy on my heart. Jean and I used to live beside Amish. They were wonderful neighbors. But I ask you to be praying for that family through this difficult time. And also, I ask you to be praying for Ronnie and Maxine, who are having emotional issues, and just keep them in prayer. Continue to pray for Gerald and Mary, and keep them in your prayers. And Sandy, ask for prayer. Just keep Sandy in your prayers also. But there are so many more prayers, so let us go to the Lord in this moment of prayer. God of grace and God of mercy, our Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for this wonderful new day that you have blessed us with. We thank you for the beauty that surrounds us in your creation. We thank you for each and every one that has gathered here this morning and also for those who will be joining us at another time. But most of all, we thank you for you, Lord, for your faithfulness to us, your children. Thank you, God, for always being there. Thank you, God, for walking with us. Thank you, God, for leading us through this time where none of us know what to expect. We don't know what today holds. We don't know what tomorrow holds. But God, we know that you hold us in the palm of your hand, and we thank you for that. We want to thank you, God, for Jesus, our Savior and our Lord. Jesus, who loved us so much that he walked that path of suffering and shame to the cross and gave his life so that we might discover your grace that brings forgiveness. And might have that hope for not only forgiveness and being set free from our sin through Jesus, but also for that eternal home that you have promised. Thank you, Jesus. And thank you, Jesus, for your promised Holy Spirit. And today we just say, come, Holy Spirit, come. Open each and every one of our hearts. Prepare our hearts for this time of worship and open our hearts to receive all that you have to give. And Lord, we want to thank you for answered prayer. We thank you that Jim is home. We thank you, God, for all the ways that you continue to hear our prayers and then faithfully answer them. Because you know the perfect timing for everything. And sometimes we need to wait. And God, you know that's difficult. 
especially as we go through this time of, with the coronavirus and the unsettledness in our nation, the racial differences that seem to be popping up here and there. God, give us your patience and your peace as we ask you to forgive us as a nation and might Jesus Christ be lifted up and bring healing to us all. We need you, Jesus. Come. Help us, the church, the church of Jesus Christ, to shine your light. Help us to share the good news wherever we go. Even in those moments we think we can't shine, let us shine, Lord. So that others might come to know the peace and the joy and the hope we have in our Savior and our Lord Jesus the Christ. And God, we all have prayer concerns upon our hearts. But we lift up to you each of those concerns we've shared this morning. We pray for those who have lost loved ones and invite you, Lord, to wrap your arms about them and comfort them. We pray for all those who have been tested positive for the coronavirus and ask you, Lord, to be their strength and be your every, their everything. Be with those who have lost loved ones to the virus, God, and we just ask that you be close to them. Because, God, it's so difficult when we go through this time and we can't be near those we love, especially those who are in care facilities or the hospital. Oh, God, continue to walk us through this unprecedented time in our life and help us to look to you and trust you. We pray for all those essential workers, Lord. We lift them up to you and ask you that you surround them and protect them and their families. But God, help us all to learn to protect them. It's not easy, Lord. But with your help and your guidance and your love, we can do what you would have us to do. And God, we pray for those who have had procedures. We pray for those who are looking ahead to procedures and ask you to continue to be with them all. May your healing flow like a river into their life. And God, there's so many right now going through emotional issues and they're just filled with fear and anxiety. Oh God, I pray that they would turn to you and that you'd be able to be with them and comfort them and set them free to walk in peace once again. And Lord, Hear all of our prayers this morning. And I just want to invite each and every one of you, right where you are, in silence, offer up your own personal prayer to our God. God, what a blessing it is just to be still and quietly talk with you. And God, I pray that as we continue our time of worship, that your spirit will abound. And I ask, Lord, that you take the brokenness in me and somehow by the power of your spirit may I be your vessel that shares the words of life that all of us need to hear today. So we thank you God and we ask it all in the precious name of Jesus our Savior who taught us to pray saying our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen and amen. I got to thinking about our children's moments, and it was so wonderful because one of those messages I got this morning sent me pictures of the children. And one was born a year ago today. Isn't that wonderful? What a year it's been for them. And I got to thinking about how God is with us all the time. And so I turned to Psalm 121, and I want to share a few verses from that psalm for all of you and our children for this time. Listen to what it shares with us. It says, the Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. Isn't that wonderful? When I think about that, I think about how difficult it is for me to remember that God's watching over me at times. That he's God. Whatever's happening, it's in his hands. And I thought about that, and I thought back, what could I share with the children? And I was thinking back when my son was many of their ages. He was probably eight or nine at this time. That is a long time ago, so I'm trying to remember. But him and his Grandma, my mom, had been to the Walmart to do the grocery shop. Of course, you know how it is. Uh, they got all this stuff and they get it into the car and they start to drive back home. And it's a half hour drive back home. So there they are. They just left Walmart. They're starting down the road. And all of a sudden they have a flat tire. You know what that sounds like, don't you? Blum, 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 blum. And they pull off the side of the road. And my son's trying to figure out what they're going to do because he's not at the age yet to know what to do and how to do that. And he said, my mom just sat there in the car. Now this is before cell phones. Before we had all those wonderful gadgets, we could press buttons and try to get help. And she just sat there. And he said, Grandma, what are we going to do? And she goes, it'll be okay. It'll be okay. And it wasn't five minutes till a car pulls in behind him. And the man comes up and he changes the tire. God watches over us. I've got a lot to learn yet. But I think my mom knew that. And I think it's a wonderful lesson for our children and all of us as we go through this difficult time. I don't like the children. I don't like the social distancing. I like being with my friends. I like having those times where rather than give elbows, we can give a hug. Or we can talk and not worry about what we might be sharing back and forth. But we've got to remember that God will get us through this because he always watches over us. Just like he was watching over my son and my mom that day. I don't think I'd have that confidence. But she did. She knew that God has promised and will always watch over us. But we need to just trust and put our hope in him. So let us pray. Father God, we want to lift our children up to you. We miss their smiles. We miss their laughter. We miss their energy that they bring. But most of all, Lord, I miss being able to share the love we have with you with them. So I ask you to be with them, God. 
there's a lot of uncertainty before us. And the talk is how will school begin once again? And what will that look like? Or what's going to happen? But God, we're going to place it in your hands. I just ask you to surround all of our children and our youth. Ask you, Lord, that each and every day, might they know that you are there watching over them, caring for them, and that you will walk with them each step they take. So be it for our children. May they know that we love them. May they know most of all that you love them, Lord. And we ask you to keep them close. But most of all, God, I ask you to protect their hearts. Protect their hearts, Lord. And we ask it all in Jesus' precious and holy name. And I say thank you, God. Amen. Amen. I want to take a moment and just say thank you. The past couple Sundays, first of all, we had Pastor Art Montgomery here and shared his thoughts on the church and how much he appreciated the church family here. But also, I appreciated the way he shared what the church family was doing then in ministry and mission. And also want to give thanks for Judy, our newest member who shared last week and her thoughts and her prayers and, and how this church family has been there for her. And certainly we can say how she's been there for us. But it's been a couple weeks and I wanted to take us back to three weeks ago because we had just started a little series I had started called Believe and Know and Amen. I want to take us back to where we said we believe. Remember what we believe? We believe in God's word. It is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We believe God so loved the world that what? He gave his one and only son. That whosoever believes in him shall have life, everlasting life, and will not perish. And we believe Jesus was sent with a mission to save the world from the darkness of sin. And then when we believe, the door opens to what we know. We know as believers in Christ how God through Jesus brought us the gift of salvation. That through Jesus, everyone who believes has been called, commissioned, and sent forth, commanded, indeed empowered by the Holy Spirit to be ambassadors. The voices of God's love through Jesus Christ today in this love star of the world. So we believe and we know, but then we need to surrender to Jesus by saying, Amen. We need to surrender to Jesus by saying, Amen. And Amen means so be it. My friends, when we surrender our lives to Jesus, the word of God lives in our hearts. Our life becomes one of growing in every way to be the hands, the feet, and the voice of Jesus today. To say amen is to embrace the freedom God gives us to live by grace and reach out and help those around us discover the love of Jesus in their hearts as we begin doing what Jesus did. But what did Jesus do, we might say? Well, Jesus fed the hungry, right? Jesus was compassionate towards those who were hurting. Jesus welcomed and embraced children. Jesus was faithful to pray and teach others to pray. Jesus went to people. People, they didn't have to come to him. Jesus went to people. Jesus touched the outcast, the poor, and the sick. Jesus didn't discriminate. And we could go on and on of what Jesus did while he was here with us. And when we say amen to Jesus, we began to do what Jesus did. And so it begins. But the path isn't always easy. Say that with me. And so it begins. But the path isn't always easy. I invite you to turn in your Bibles and have them to the Gospel of Mark, the ninth chapter. The Gospel of Mark, the ninth chapter, beginning at the 14th verse. <clears throat> when they came to the other disciples, they saw a large crowd around them and the teachers of the law arguing with them. 
As soon as all the people saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with wonder and ran to greet him. What are you arguing with them about? He asked. A man in the crowd answered, Teacher, I brought you my son who is possessed by a spirit that has robbed him of speech. And whenever it seizes him, it throws him to the ground. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. And I asked your disciples to drive out the spirit, but they could not. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Now we got to put this in perspective and look at this. Jesus and Peter, James, and John are coming down off the mountain. And we know it as the Mount of Transfiguration. Where they saw something holy like they never saw before. And they heard God say, this is my son from heaven. And they come down off the mountain. And they find the teachers of the law arguing with the other disciples. Now I just want to say this. Arguing seldom. Now maybe I'll say it this way. Arguing never brings people together. Arguing always makes the wall of separation wider. Often when it turns to an argument, we need to be silent to go to God and pray before we say a word. But keep this in mind. It is important on a faith journey to be aware of the battles we are facing. We need to be aware of the battles we are facing. Well, let's dig a little deeper and see what we can learn. Well, the disciples have been asked to drive out this evil spirit that was holding a young boy captive, and they could not. And the teachers of the law are arguing with the disciples. We don't know what they are saying, right? It doesn't tell us what they were saying, what they were arguing about. But I can imagine the teachers of the law were bold. They were saying things like, why couldn't you set this boy free? You claim to be followers of Jesus who claims to be from God. That's blasphemy. You don't have the authority. You see, the teachers of the law are scribes. They're experts in the law of Moses. They've studied it. They've memorized it. They know it up here in their heads. But listen. Their struggle, their battle, was with God and what God was doing through Jesus. And remember, Jesus came to fulfill the law, to do what the law could not. Jesus said in Matthew 5, 17, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish, but to fulfill them. So the teachers of the law were in a battle, struggling with God and what God was doing through Jesus. Their battle was with God and not the disciples. The truth is, the good news that Jesus brought is more than knowledge and knowing it. And thus the teachers of the law were struggling with the freedom that Jesus was bringing of grace. As Jesus comes alive when we receive it into our hearts. See those scribes had it all up here. But when Jesus comes, by grace, we got to receive it in our hearts. So thus the teachers of the law were in a battle with God who was working on them through Jesus. And then I think about those disciples. I mean, they had been sent out already and they, were, they had prayed over evil spirits and they had left. They had healed. 
But could it be those disciples, so young in their faith, didn't understand and thought this was a personal attack? And thus came the arguing back and forth because they forgot that what they do is not about themselves. Who's it all about? It's about God and what God can do through them. And thus, in this argument, the only one winning through this was the darkness of evil that separates people from the light of God and what God is doing in us. Let me ask you something. What battle are you facing today? Are you focused on what the battle is truly about? You know, sometimes we point fingers and say the battle is about this or it's about that. Sometimes we even make it a political battle. We say it's about my freedom and my rights. This person is wrong and it's all about them. Did we ever point a finger at somebody? My friends, sometimes the battle is within. As we struggle with our walk of faith and what God is doing in us. To say amen is to embrace the freedom God gives us through grace to reach out and help those around us and discover the love of God in their hearts as God continues to fill our hearts with his love all by grace. And in turn, we grow we grow in our faith as we begin to do what Jesus did by becoming the hands and the feet and the voice of Jesus today. You know, sometimes the battle we face is what God is trying to do within us, within me. Like me, have you ever had those moments when the battle you thought you were fighting was not what you thought it was, but it was with you? Battle with God? I remember back my mom's health was going downhill. And she got to the place where we needed to have her in a care facility. She got to that place where she couldn't walk anymore. At least she couldn't take very many steps. And they would get her around in a wheelchair. and You had to take her, if you did anything with her, the wheel were outside. She couldn't walk. You had to use the wheelchair. And while she's in this care facility, I had a lot of responsibility watching over her and making sure everything was going right and going okay. And then while we were going through that time, her last sibling, her sister, died. And I had hoped uh, someone else would be willing because my plate was full and I had a lot going on and I was hoping someone else would take her to the viewing because I felt she needed to go to the viewing with her sister. But nobody would. Guess who it was falling back on if it was going to happen? It's me. And I started to get angry. You know why I got angry? Because part of it was the where the viewing was going to be at the funeral home. It was two miles from our house where Gene and I was at that time. Past. But mom was 35, 40 minutes away and I'd have to go get her, load everything in the car, bring her down to the viewing, take her back home, and then come back. And I'm there like, why can't anybody else? Won't somebody step up? See, I had a battle going on. So I remember going that night and I got there and they were wonderful inside the nursing care facility. They had her ready to go and, and they wheeled her out for me and we got her in the car and I got the wheelchair in the car. We were all set and they left her bring out that white bear. 
Now that bear was wonderful. That teddy bear was such a good thing. It was a gift. And the thing is, when you press the heart of that bear, it would sing, Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. So once we get started, we're not even out of the town. And mom doesn't talk much at this time. She knows where we're going. And she's just smiling. She lifts that bear up. And she presses the heart. And as soon as it stops singing, she presses it again. All of a sudden, my battle was against that bear. <laughs> I mean, it was the whole way down the road. I wanted to take that bear and put the window down and throw it out the window. Even though I gave her that bear. <laughs> So you can imagine how all this is building up inside me. See the battle going on? First I was pointing it at other people, now I'm pointing to the bear, it's the bear's battle. Finally I get to the funeral home and the bear is quiet. Praise God. And the funeral home knew I was coming, I did a lot for them and with them and they came out and they helped me get mom out of the car and into the wheelchair. And they stood with mom while I parked the car. But then we get inside, of course, pushing the wheelchair around where a lot of people are. It's not always easy either. Then I see the people I wish would have said who lived a few minutes from where mom was. I wish they'd have said, well, I'll take it. But we got into the line and we finally get up to the casket where mom's sister is laying. And mom can't get up. And she can't see in to see her sister. And I wheel her up. You know what she did? She took that bear. Held it up over the side of the casket. And that bear became her eyes. And her mouth. And she said, I love you. To her sister. And then she hit the heart. And in that moment, the battle in me stopped. You know why? Because God had placed it on my heart to take her to the viewing. The battle I was having the whole time was with God. And what God had placed on my heart. And in that moment, I realized this was a very special moment for my mom. And if I would not have listened to God, even though I battled everybody else, I would have missed out on that holy moment that I've never forgotten in my life. What battle are you facing today? Are you focused on what the battle is truly about? Or like the teachers of the law and the disciples, could your battle be with God who is trying to do a holy thing in your life? We need to know what our battle is about. We need to know what battle we are facing today. When I look at the teachers of the law arguing with the disciples, do you notice that when Jesus showed up, it stopped? The argument stopped. They were silenced. And we're going to continue looking at this scripture next week. But in the meantime, think about it. What battle are you facing? Or what is God trying to do? And you. Now we can be like the scribes, the teachers, and know it all up here. But God wants to do it in here, in your heart. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for your word. That is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We thank you for your goodness and mercy, and we thank you, God, that you are patient with us. 
And we ask that you flow with grace into our lives and help us to see where our battles truly are. But God, if our battle is with you, we pray that your grace will abound and open our hearts to see and just give ourselves to you and allow you to work through us and within us. So God, thank you. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. And amen. I invite you, if you're able, let us stand together and sing our closing song. always with us. He's always with you. Open your hearts. Give him your struggles. Give him your hurts. Give him your pains. But it could be, it could be something he's trying to do in you. And trust him. And know that he cares for you. And go with the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God is Holy Spirit. And all God's children shout, Amen, amen. and Amen.